Hi, I'm Dr. Cameron McKinley, a technology integration coach with Hoover City Schools. I took the artificial intelligence course from ISTE in 2018, and I've been using what I learned to teach teachers and students about artificial intelligence ever since. I started with teachers, and then moved to high school students, and then I soon realized that we need to start much earlier. So now I've been incorporating artificial intelligence lessons with kindergarten through second graders. Our first graders sort data. They mirror how AI learns from the patterns in the data. Okay, we're doing this. When we discuss bias and emphasize how important our decisions are that shape these data sets, um, students need to understand how machines learn so that they can make sure that the data that we use in artificial intelligence is the best data to give us the best answers to the problems that we may come up with or the questions. Just like we repeatedly teach math and phonics, understanding artificial intelligence fundamentals early prepares kids for their future where AI is going to play a significant role in their lives. It's a, it's a smart computer. It's a smart computer? What, what, do you, what do you think it is? Anybody else know what artificial intelligence is? What do you think? It's a computer that makes you smarter. It's a computer that makes you smarter? It's fascinating to see the students explore the data organization and grasp the challenges that AI faces in recognizing drawings like cats or frogs. The kids were able to pick up on this and were very engaged. If you're a teacher unsure about teaching artificial intelligence, ISTE offers excellent guides for all grades. I use the elementary guide for hands-on activities, and we started with the activity without computers, sorting cards and organizing, and that was followed by a computer-based lesson using QuickDraw, a program that recognizes drawings based on data using machine learning. And we encourage students to learn from failures whenever it didn't guess their drawing fostering a growth mindset. Trying to draw glasses, which is, and you drew a glass, right? What are those? Glasses. What kind of glasses did it mean? I can't for you to see. And you thought it was what? A bottle of glass. You thought it was that, so the computer didn't understand, did it? So I would advise, just don't be overwhelmed. Start with a guide that matches your subject and grade, and they include resources. Uh, I found the free sorting card resources in the guide, and um, I also used a, a document camera for a whole group of activities. And even without everyone having a computer, you can demo Quick Draw and engage the students in discussions. And the guides have questions that you can ask to help you. I see lime or green bean. Ooh, what green green? Green? I see toothbrush, <laughs> or feather, Five, four, or paintbrush, three, two, or fork. I see hockey stick. Sorry. A water spout. Yeah. So I can look at this and I can learn how I might draw a whale next time and I might draw the big part, but then do that big tail like y'all were trying to tell me to do and do a water spout. So this computer has all this data where it learned to draw a whale. Now, what if there were a picture of pancakes in there and somebody told this computer that pancakes were a whale? Would the data be right? No. No, no that would mess up our data, right? It needs to know that these are whales, right? Yes. But does everybody draw a whale exactly the same? No. So should it only recognize the way I draw a whale or does it have to learn a lot of different ways? A lot of different ways. A lot of different ways. So, Oh, are you looking to see the data? What did you look at? Which one do you want to look at? I want to look at that. This is a bear. Wow, that's 127,756 drawings of what? Angels. <laughs> what do you notice about all those bicycles? Um, the different sizes and uh -huh. different shapes. What do they all have the same? Wheels and handles and seats. They have what? Wheels, handles, and seats. They all have wheels, handles, and seats. That is says compass. And a compass is something you use to look and see whether you're going north, south, east, or west. Oh, I know how to draw that. Okay. 
students also learned a lot of new vocabulary words and they were more willing to try to sound out a word more motivated because they really wanted to be able to draw it. So they would either ask a friend or try to sound it out. And we talked about all the new vocabulary we learned at the end. So I would just encourage you to give your students the opportunity to engage with this exciting technology, to understand it, and to prepare them for their futures.